So for this next, next talk, we have uh, John Withers here, and there's going to be someone else. I'm sure you'll give me that information in good time. And um, John actually gave uh, quite an interesting talk at Wedgefield Camp 2, where um, he described his CUDA project, or their CUDA project, at an earlier stage. And in the meantime, they have open sourced the code and put it out there. And um, one of the really exciting aspects of this project is that it's one that really tries to do the whole authoring step, maybe a little more sort of 360 than some other, um, some other projects in the browser. So it's a, it's a full sort of editor in the browser, which is very exciting. And um, are you pretty much good to go? You want to put that to 1024 and 60 hertz. There you go. Yeah, that's what I want. That to gets you. That gets us that nice video stream yeah. that the people out in the tube love. OK. Um, yeah, so basically, you're here to update us as what, is, what has been done since. Yes. yes. You're good to go? Yes, I am. Take it away, then. All right. Um, my name's uh, John Petoric, and I work for um, SRI International. And uh, working on the CUDA project, which was sponsored by the uh, Department of Energy. And uh, what I wanted to do today was mostly introduce you guys to our world editor and our tools. And uh, the, our site's mentioned there. And uh, you can find us on the web there and, and our project. So one of the things I wanted to state up front about our world editor is it's it's uh, live, and our latest stable release is, is always available there. So you can go to the site, and you can run it uh, directly. Uh, no need to clone the uh, Mercurial repository, but you can do that as well um, and run it locally if you like. So our project started out with the technical challenge of, of building a tool, a GUI tool, to allow any user or any, any person, hopefully the widest possible audience, a GUI tool to uh, add behavior to 3D and author uh, interactivity, hopefully in the most easiest way. Um, and so our tool, we do that with uh, triggers and actions. And so we wanted to go from uh, this, which isn't bad, but certainly friendly to a programmer, uh, to a GUI tool. So I'm going to open up that GUI tool, because most of my presentation, I'm going to hopefully use it. All right, so I'm going to skip to slide 12. Uh, I forgot to mention, uh, I'm going to take about 10 minutes, hopefully, and then uh, um, our partner, JHT, on the project is going to show up, come up and show some stuff they built with CUDA and how they're using it. Okay, so, so uh, API makes sense to programmer. GUI makes sense to the non-programmer. So we were building a GUI tool. We wanted to build it to do authoring and interactivity, provide same level of control from the uh, editor as an API, hopefully, uh, by isolating scripting behavior or interaction and incorporating it into GUI tools. So hopefully I'll show you that. So what we usually do is, is uh, so here's our world editor. We do that first, the isolation of a specific scripting action. So say a particle effect. Um, we have a particle effect tool here. And we usually implement that at first in a uh, form heavy way. So you can see that here. So it, it's GUI, but not intuitive. But I'll go ahead and show you. We kind of we took a, a, an additional step and said, well, we probably should provide some defaults at first. So I'm going to pick that guy there. And we should see some smoke here when I click Start. So there we go. Um, so a person could start to tweak these values and stop and start it and see what that looks like. Okay, so that's kind of the initial approach, is a form-based form approach. But in, a, in addition, um, well, the forms, you know, not intuitive, 
and you definitely need some domain knowledge about particle effects to fill out that form. But, but you at least have a GUI that you can tweak it and guess. So uh, we usually move to some more advanced um, uh, tool that is more intuitive and more typical. So I'm going to skip some stuff uh, so I provide time to our, our uh, partner, JHT, on the stage here. But I'll show you our camera on a curve just for fun. So I've already made a project with our tool. I'm going to load that in. Okay, so I got an air duct here. And so real quickly, I'm just going to make the camera essentially orbit around. And so you don't have to know. There is a form here, but I can, I can, I have a button. I can just grab the camera data, and then I can rotate it. Grab the camera data and rotate it. And you notice in the background there, there's a curve being drawn, which is what the camera is going to travel on, and rotate it. And finally get back close to my center there and add that one. Okay, so I'm going to scroll. So there's, there's a loop, and I can click Start, and we can watch the camera go on that curve. And so, oh boy, so small resolution here just discovered. <laughs> um, I can't, I can't uh, save that. There's a little box down there. I'd have to delete some of these uh, points, but I'll do that so I can get to the box, just so you guys can see. I want to show how we uh, allow a person to create some set of a, be a behavior like camera flowing on a curve, and uh, they can give it a name. So, so I'll call it camera curve. So I'm going to save that. So we're starting to work on allowing you to create triggers and actions right here on the tool. But I'm going to use uh, our initial, our, 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 um, our tool for authoring uh, behavior and interactivity. So what I want to do is just say that when I'm a, I want this model to load up and I want to uh, I want the camera to go on that curve. So I'm going to select move on curve. I add the behavior. I pick the camera curve. I pick, so I'm going to pick in 72 frames. And I'll just give it a, a name, a simple name. OK, so what I can do is file preview. And there you go. It took uh, no JavaScript, just using this GUI tool. And I can save that project. I have to stop preview, and I can save it just to show you guys that it, and I'll call it uh, dash two here. So I'm not pulling any tricks, and uh, I'll close that. Okay, so, oops, minimize that guy. So there we go. Bring Chrome back up. And go to the editor. And as long as I wasn't pulling any fast tricks, we should be able to. So AirDuck 2 is there. I have two projects there. I can load it. And I can preview it again. And we should see that curve there. So, And we can go to our camera. And oh, our curve's not there. There's a bug. Anyways, um, so, but it did save the project, and that project is really easy to throw into an HTML page, and uh, uh, just with basic uh, HTML knowledge included into your content and throw it up out on the web. So, you know, back to uh, Firefox here, and uh, so that's kind of some GUI, you know, better GUI tools to accomplish uh, a task of putting the camera on a curve, right? So I showed you there that um, 
we had a dedicated tool for behavior and interactivity authoring with our triggers and actions and being able to set those up. I only did a quick example of loading a model and uh, sending the camera on the curve. Uh, but then in, in addition, we're incorporating them at the level of the, uh, um, of, of, uh, of the tool itself. And, and I showed you how that started to appear. And I'll just to emphasize that. For example, if I picked a, just a specific viewpoint um, and I save that, so I'll call that. Now here I can say, I can say respond to a trigger. So it already, con the context is already set for me that it's, it's gonna move to a view and it's gonna be this viewpoint. So all I have to decide on is what's gonna trigger that. So I could go by, I could trigger that by say camera stop, um, for example, and save that. Give it a name, and there you go. Now, now there's a, a behavior tied right. So I can I can not lose the context of my 3D scene, and add in a, a specific behavior right to right onto a tool, in a very nice GUI. Hopefully, a very nice GUI tool way. Whereas this might be overwhelming to someone um, at first blush. Okay, so. What I wanted to do for you guys is, uh, is uh, author uh, a simple example, because our target environment is, uh, is education. I'm just keeping track of the time, so I leave time for Monty and his team. Uh, I wanted to show you guys that, how I might build, using our, edi our editor, an educational scenario. Uh, hopefully used for learning. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to reuse that uh, air duct uh, model. Okay, so we'll see. This was modeled uh, with the unit being centimeters, so it's very large. And our unit is uh, meter, one meter. So I'm just going to scale this guy down to a reasonable size. All right, whoops, so I'm going to zoom back in here. So the, so I, I know that this particular mod, I can, I can move around and explore it, um, pretty typical stuff, right? Uh, but I'm mostly interested in, I, I know that this, this particular uh, air duct was modeled in a way that I, it, they made a cutaway for me. So I can hide it. Um, so I can, and, and I want to put some particles flowing through this air duct uh, to hopefully teach, what I want to teach is uh, air going from hot to cold. Say that's uh, my scenario that I'm wanting to teach. But in addition to, uh, to uh, um, hiding it, I could make it uh, transparent so I could do it, you know, that way as well. Uh, if I want with this uh, slider up here. So it's a nice, easy way to apply that effect and uh, set the opacity. So, so that's kind of nice too. All right, so I'm going to leave it right, let's say there. All right, so now I'm going to kind of set up uh, where I might want my camera to be when, it, when we start. So let's do that. So we real quickly create a viewpoint. I can preview that viewpoint just like that. Let's call it cam one. All right, now I'm gonna work on, oh, actually, I'm gonna go ahead and add that behavior that I want. When we load up the model, I wanna get there in one frame. Yeah, so move. So on load move to cam one. Okay, so I've set that up and just to test it out, let's go ahead and preview it real quickly. 
All right. So now I'm going to move on to the particle system. All right. So, oh, that's why I needed to I needed to shrink this. I forgot that. Zoom out a little there. So I'm going to go down to a new tool we just added called uh, 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 curves. I'm going to create a curve here. I'm going to select a uh, trail type, and I'm going to select some arrow types, and I'm going to select a number, and let's do 100. I'm going to select a color. So I'm going to, I wanted to go hot air to cold air, so I'm going to select that. Select a lifetime, 10 seconds. I'll make the size quarter of an inch. And uh, I'm not going to worry about tension. I'm not gonna, and I'm going to aim the, make sure the arrows follow the curve. So I'm going to set that. So we have an unsuper gooey way initially to create your, where did it go? Your waypoints. But once you've done that, you can uh, grab these. Um, and this is the starting point of the system. So I can, whoops, move it. Okay. Get it up there. Okay. Let's see. Oh, let's get this in front. My finger is hitting that button, the right mouse button. There we go. Okay, so that's our first one. So we got that one there. That's a good enough position. I'm not going to worry about making it perfect. Let's add another one. So just to show you guys that you can uh, do it and you can start to preview it, I can hit start. And here's those uh, arrows. So. I'm running low. This, this takes more time than I thought. Um, so I'm going to leave it at that. You can use your imagination that I could add another box and another box. I'm just going to go ahead and stop it. And you see that it's a trail, so it's, you know, it's stopping. So I'm going to leave that. I'm going to give it a name here. What's this? Okay. Okay, so... What another last thing I want to do is I'll make a th just this fan to rotate so that we can pretend uh, that it, uh, it's pulling these uh, air molecules in. And uh, so I, I'm going to go to our rotator here. Click this rotator, set a velocity. That's all I need to do. I can preview that, all right? So no coding, nothing, just doing it all here in the code, it, with the GUI editor, not in code. Um, I'll call this, okay. So I save that, okay. So what I wanna do now is set this all up to happen. So I've already got my one behavior here for uh, uh, the camera moving in. And so what I can do is once that happens, I can click that link and I'm going to I'm going to start up the uh particle system. So give this a name. Start. Give that a name. And then I'm going to also, I probably should have started, so on model load, I'm going to start the, uh, that rotator here. So I'm going to enable that. Okay, now hopefully if, uh, if everything's working right, this should all start up and preview. Now is that fan turning? Look at that. So I wanted to do more. I wanted to build it, but it takes time, and I, I don't want to put you guys to sleep, me moving these boxes around. But you totally could. I could 
uh, add more boxes. You can move them in real time. I, I wanted to show that too, but I, I need to let um, Monty have some time. So, uh, and you can see the, the particle trail follow you moving the box around. Um, this release is coming soon, uh, hopefully soon, and you'll be able to play with it online. If you clone our repository now, you can play with it now. So um, without further ado, I'd like to give uh, uh, JHT a chance to show what they've built with CUDA. Thank you. We could take a quick question while we do the flip. Since I anticipated, um, is there a is there a question for John right now? Yeah. Wait on. Uh, do you need to run a separate server in order to run this a work editor? No, it'll run locally. You just can't save and and uh, you can't uh, save and um, open projects. So uh, um, the saving the saving and opening a project uh, needs a server, but we use a. Uh, uh, Locally, we use Node. Um, so if you if you're fine with running uh, Node.js, oh thank you. If you're fine with running uh, Node.js, then you can get the uh, file, um, the project saving. But if you don't care about that, you can you do the dash dash allow local file access in essence for Chrome or Firefox. You do it as a flag, and then you can use the world editor without a server. Okay, I think we're good to move on from here. Take it away. Okay. Uh, my name is Monty Watson. I'm programming manager at JHT. And with me today, I have Desmond Abua, who is our lead CUDA programmer. And what we want to share with you is our use of the CUDA uh, library and tools in actually building uh, content in a live production environment. Uh, right now, JHT is part of the United States Department of Energy's effort to develop computer-based training for the weatherization assistance program. Uh, early on, we discovered that the DOE was a very strong proponent of open source technologies, and hence our encountering for the first time uh, with the world of uh, WebGL and then eventually the CUDA library. Just to give you some background of what our requirements were for this project, um, basically, our job was to develop media and storyboards that we received from industry experts in the, uh, in the, in the courseware uh, topics we were covering. Uh, the kind of uh, installation, sorry, the kind of me media that we were developing included simulations of installation procedures, uh, inspection procedures, uh, simulations involving test equipment, uh, animations for building science concepts. And a key here is that JHT's background was courseware development using uh, web development skills. And we really wanted to utilize our, exis our existing team and the skill sets they had. And, uh, we, and so we need some sort of framework to ramp up quickly. And what we found was is that the CUDA environment let us do that. Um, I'm going to show you briefly just a high level overview of the uh, pipeline that we're using for production. Uh, we're using, um, basically, once we receive the storyboards or media request, we collaborate with our uh, artists, and we decide what's going to be done within the 3D modeling environment. Uh, so whether or not an animation loop is going to be baked in in a modeling environment, or whether something is going to be handled by code. Uh, we move on. Uh, our personal. Uh, uh, pr software that we use is 3D Studio Max. We develop the models and assets. We get, right now we're using the Autodesk Collada exporter, and this is one place where the CUDA uh, team has been a great help. Uh, they are very strong supporters of those using their uh, platform, and right now this is a work in progress. I need to point out that when we first started this project last year, we were still using an O3D implementation of the CUDA library. In the last two months, we've been going through the conversion to WebGL, and we're still working out the uh, kinks that we have in this process. But right now, we're following this process where we're going through the Autodesk Collada exporter to the Google JSON um, converter, and finally, we have the JSON file. Uh, we are using the world editor you just saw as a validator for everything we develop. The, the uh, features of that engine is improving every month, and 
as time goes by, we're going to be incorporating that world editor more into our actual core process uh, for developing. But after that, basically, uh, uh, we're kind of oversimplifying what's happening in this next step, but basically we're applying our programming templates. But this is basically where all the interactivity is happening. And finally, we're providing wrappers for the inner platform, which is the DOE's learning environment. And then we're deploying for review and subsequent comments, revisions, and so forth. And I'll show you two examples of actual uh, assets that we're using in an actual piece of media from a piece of courseware. But what we have here is a simple sandbox that we developed. Uh, this is an avatar of an installation worker, and we knew we were going to have a need for uh, portraying workers in their various 3D activities. So what we have here is a way to collect all our personal protection equipment and kind of get a view live of what, uh, what this would look like in an actual rendering. Uh, one thing that we're experimenting with is the ability to, swap, uh, to quickly swap uh, textures mid-activity. Uh, there are several times that we've tried to use this to um, enhance the experience, and we've gotten to where uh, we're able to do pretty significant swaps of textures uh, pretty quickly. We can also swap between, you know, the entire model as well. Another example we have is an actual activity. And this, uh, this example, uh, this is an example of a good use, I think, of 3D interactivity in courseware. Basically, this is part of the blower door basics course, which is teaching an installer or, or inspector to use a blower door to blow air out of the house and then test the pressure to see how leaky the house is or how tight the house is. During the courseware, the student's been learning all the things he's supposed to do to prepare for the activity. All, ex all external windows and doors closed, uh, all internal doors open, all air vents open, watch out for gas appliances, things like that. So this is a way now for me to actually uh, make sure I'm, I can prepare a house correctly. So there's directions here of all the things I'm supposed to be uh, looking out for. But this is an actual 3D uh, environment. I can, I, from the overhead view, I can click any room and move into that room. And now I can actually interact with windows, doors, so I need to make sure that's closed. This is a rep representation of an air vent, so I'm going to say that I want to open that vent. Here is an animation loop of a flame. I'm going to turn that off. Another thing that they get taught is that if there's any sinks and if the house is not um, occupied, to make sure they fill the drains with water so you don't, you know, uh, bring in bad fumes from the septic, so I'm going to fill the drain. This is a CUDA particle system, so that same particle system you just saw John set up, we're, um, we're using uh, here for that effect. So basically, uh, I can also interact from up here, so if I can actually click on an area from the overhead view as well, so if I don't want to zoom into a room. But some of, this, some of these perspectives are, would be very hard to do if you didn't have a live 3D environment like this. Right here, I've just encountered a big, oh no, walk away from this test. There's actually live embers in the uh, fireplace. I do not want to blow in air from the chimney with that. So I'm supposed to abort the test at this point. I'm going to go ahead and return, and just for the sake of expediency, show you what happens when I submit. <laughs> Unfortunately, there's no great effects with things burning yet. Uh, but what we do have here is a long list of things I got wrong. Uh, so the first thing I see here is a textual list numbered of all the things that are wrong. I can hide that list and I can actually see in the model everything I got wrong in red. And the numbers corresponding are 3D sprites, it's rotating to always face the camera here, that corresponds to the actual numbers here so the student can keep retaking this test until they get it right. So I can try again, all the doors are randomly closing and opening, it's reconfiguring itself and it's ready for me to try it again. But this is the sort of thing, uh, this is actually uh, in alpha, this particular uh, courseware. But uh, we look forward to doing more interactive, immersive uh, interactions like this. And I think that this is uh, probably, I hope, a, a good promise for what could be uh, doable with WebGL technology in, in the actual uh, production world once we get more tools ready to use. 
So that's that's all I had. There are, you know, there are still a lot of people when you are talking about this stuff. This is like, what do you need 3D for? And you know, that's a great use case. So um, the question right there. Sure. One second. We have to get the test answers in too. Hello. Yeah. I can wait until. Uh, oh, he's busy. <laughs> uh, sorry. Uh, okay, it's a little comment and a question because this uh, this activity reminded me of the potential of the AR components and how we can create these kind of activities, learning activities, practices in the physical space, the same kind of activities. I just want to ask if you have any ideas about that expansion. Are you planning to integrate? Sorry, I didn't hear what you were. Some of the some of the augmented reality or the mixed reality applications oh, can okay. be very effective with this kind of education activities. And I was wondering if you have any plans or Ideas about it, well, right now, uh, one of the things I'm going to go back to is to point out that we are users of the technology that the CUA team developed. Um, augmented reality, I know, has some great potential, but right now we are users of the platform that John and his team are using, so they, they would probably be better at uh, answering a question like that. Um, Monty, by early next year, how many immersive <laughs> examples do you think you're going to have? That's some internal yeah. politics. Yeah, my project, man, my project manager says all that are assigned. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we have a question up here. Yeah, I don't know uh, who would be the best person to ask this to, um, but what about support for IFC models, since you're doing a lot of work with uh, buildings and the construction industry? Nobody doesn't have a microphone get to answer. <laughs> so, do you have an answer? Or? I, I don't. Is there someone that does have an answer that would like a microphone? Show of hands? Show of hands? Well, you should be up here anyway, John. Okay, can you walk and talk? Chew gum? <laughs> uh, so, we need a little help with uh, IFC, because I turned to everyone and said, what's an IFC model? We really fell off this microphone wagon here, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Whoops, I had to. Okay, it's um, it's it's uh, it's a format being used by the construction industry. So since y'all are using this uh, for energy, uh, it looks like education and these types of things. I know that uh, part of the construction industry is very interesting in building facilities management. How do they reuse these assets and those kinds of things? So uh, as the models become uh, better defined and detailed, coming out of CAD programs like Revit. And then you have them coming out of uh, manufacturing uh, programs as well, Bentley, Cadwork, those kinds of things. Um, are, are there any plans to use those assets so that way people don't have to recreate that asset or go through this big conversion process to get it into uh, th this environment? Oh, Lordy, this thing's getting out of hand. <laughs> <laughs> okay, can you, quick answer, we're about to move on. There are three other projects that are uh, developing similar resources that will be publicly available, all open source. Uh, one project for commercial buildings will use simulation-driven animations of office buildings. Another one for residences is looking at providing code officials with uh, plan checking and uh, on-site inspection uh, training. So this goes on and on. There's a third one that's doing lighting and daylighting systems. And uh, actually, the fourth, the uh, solar decathlon, if you're familiar with it, uh, who is using Re Revy, um, is actually looking at working with us in CUDA as well, although we haven't started that work yet. Right, but for the asset. Yes. The other thing, I think, to really answer your question, it's really the export out of that application. So it's a Colada. If if Revit, I've been I've used Revit a couple of years ago before Autodesk even bought it. But um, if Collada um, can export out of Revit, then it should be able to import into the CUDA environment, and then it can be used. If 
Very cool. If not, then you can get from FPX to Colada and, and you're golden. So thanks, guys. Give them a round of applause, please.